Thank you, brother. Sister. As always. Amen. All right, without further ado, let Brother Keith, we're going to pray for him right quick. That's all right, brother. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, stretch your hands this way. Father, we thank you for Brother Keith. And we thank you for the emergency anointing that's about to be placed upon him. Father, for standing in for the man of God, Lord God. And we thank you for him being ready in season, Lord God, and out. We just ask you to anoint him afresh this morning. Let the meditations of his mind and, Father, the words pour out of his heart this morning straight from the throne room of God, Lord God, unto all us, Lord God. We just ask you to minister mightily to him, strengthen him, and strengthen us in this matter, Lord God, as well. And we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. 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 All right, let me see if I can figure out how to turn this way. Got a bookmark somewhere. You got it? Okay. It's on there. yourself a hero, but you are. You are in the eyes of the people that, because I, I heard it again this morning on TV, that freedom's not free. A lot of people gave up their lives for us to be free. And I saw when the president was in France celebrating the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I. Uh, and it's a tremendous event. There's a lot of graves over there for American soldiers that didn't make it back home ultimate sacrifice. Just like our Jesus Christ did. Amen. He gave the ultimate sacrifice also. And I want to get into the message a little bit this morning. And I appreciate you doing the veteran and, and getting that done. And, uh, Pastor texted me last night. <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to be speaking today. And, and of course I, I didn't hesitate because uh, uh, I always just bring you the word that God gives me from the heart. I study and read, and then he brings something up that he wants brought up. So I'm not going to tell you that you're going to have a, you might get out before uh, the Baptist do today, because I, I assure you it won't be a long message, but it's a message from the heart that God's given me. And uh, I appreciate you being here today and being a part of it. You know the pastor's. He's kind of in fix, his daughter in the hospital, his wife in the hospital, and so that puts him in the hospital. He has to be there with him and spend his time there. That, that's where he's at today. He's with his family, supporting his family. And that's where he needs to be. He can do God's work there and, and still be with us. I'm sure he's prayed for the church services today. He prayed for each and every one of us, and I know that he's prayed for me. So let's... Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about today about image, self-image. What is your self-image of yourself? What is your self-image of uh, what God has done in your life, doing in your life? And in doing this, I'm going to mention a few heroes that I consider. I've talked about heroes already. You veterans are heroes. You really are. And I'm going to talk a little bit about heroes in the Bible. And it will be brief. And then I'm going to, I got one more, another hero or two that I'm going to mention that is not really mentioned in the Bible. All right. Uh, deep down in, how do you picture yourself? That's what I'm asking. How do you picture yourself to be qualified or insignificant or inferior or inadequate? If you are, if you picture yourself that way, you probably act that way. And that's not what God expects of us. That's not what God says that he would do for us and help us to do are you uh, making excuses why you can't take the leadership position or get involved in programs for God that God's got out there? Can you volunteer for a, a job or a work here at the church to help further God's work here at the church? I've noticed now the ladies, I'm telling you, they've done a tremendous work in the last few months Amen. here in the church. They've been cleaning and sprucing things up, fixing things up, and it looks wonderful. I admire them. I, I encourage them keep on doing these things because it, I'll be honest with you, this house has been neglected for a while. It has been because there hasn't been there hasn't been a lot of work done, hasn't been a lot taken care of. It's been put aside. It's been set on the back burner. But now I'm telling you, God's house is, is God's house. And the work that you're doing for God in God's house will not be neglected by God. He sees it and he's encouraging it and he'll give you his spirit of Wanting to do things, wanting to do more. And I encourage you folks that are here 
that if you see where they've done some things and you will look around, you can see some things that's been improved and worked on. And uh, it's, a, it's an awesome work, an awesome ministry, and I appreciate them doing it. If God chose only the perfect people, he wouldn't have anybody to work with. So he said, well, I can't do it. I, I mean, I'm not good at that. Well, so what? You do what you can, you do your best, and then God will take over and God will do the rest. Amen. That's the way it works. He'll take over and do what you can't do. So, God loves to use ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And that's where I'm going to talk about some extraordinary people that are heroes in the Bible. And uh, the Apostle Paul was one of them. He, was, he had a thorn in his flesh, and he asked God three times to release him from this thorn. And God told him, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is perfect in weakness. So when you think you can't quite get something done that you see needs to be done, something that God's called you to do, then don't say, well, I can't do it. I can't. He's, I'm up here speaking. I'm not a speaker. I'm a teacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm a, I teach. I don't, I don't preach. I teach. So... That's why I'm reading a lot of this stuff. And I say, and if you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. You can do anything that you want to do as long as you've got God on your side. And he will perfect that work in you. So, uh, Moses sent out 12 spies to scout the promised land. And then they stayed in there for six weeks in the promised land. Scouted out. They didn't just go in. They would send these spies ahead. And they uh, reported that it was a land of milk and honey, grapes and pomegranates, more than it takes two men to tote a bunch of grapes on the pole. And that's, so that's a pretty productive place, kind of place you'd like to be. But there was ten negative reports, and they said, well, there's giants in the land, of course. And out of the ten, out of the twelve, there was ten negative reports. And said the giants in our own sight as grasshoppers. All those, those ten spies, ten of those said, well, they, they felt like grasshoppers in a land of giants. Well, how do you feel when you've got to work today? Do you have that grasshopper mentality? That I can't, there's all these bigger people around me that needs to be doing these things, not me? Well, I don't think that would be true. They don't, that's not true. You need, if God's called you to do a work, if he said a work before you that you can do, you feel like you can maybe give it a try, then you need to do it. Don't consider yourself a grasshopper. If you're a grasshopper mentality, it's because you see it that way in your own eyes. God doesn't see you that way. He sees you as a giant. He sees you as a hero. He sees you as somebody that can do. And he'll choose you. He'll set you. If he gives you a work to do, he'll equip you for that work. He won't just let you go out there with no, no equipment, nothing, something that you can't do. But there was two in the group that said, yes, we can. And they're the Hebrews. That was Joshua and Caleb. They were two of the twelve spies. And they had a different report. It's like they had gone to a different place. They didn't even give them close to the same report. They said they weren't grasshoppers. They said, we're well able to possess. Our God is bigger than any giant. That was their attitude. Our God is bigger than the situation that we walked into. Our God is bigger than those giants. Our God is bigger than the whole land. And that was their report. So they were heroes in my eyes because they said we can do. We can do work for God. God is on our side. And I've heard this mentioned many times in this pulpit. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. All things. Praise God. They were two witnesses of what they became. Witnesses for God. <clears throat> Refuse to see yourself as a grasshopper. We're able because he is able. Our God is able. God's army is clothed with armor of light, hidden in Christ, protected from the sight of the enemy. I'm hidden in Christ. He is in me and I am in him. And when the enemy looks at me, he sees Christ. And that's the way we all should be, hidden in Christ. Nothing that comes against you can come against you without having come up against Christ. Because he'll be between you and the enemy every time. God already has enough grasshoppers. Grasshoppers swarm in large groups, and they do a lot of damage. And they, so we don't need to be grasshoppers. He wants people willing, ready, and able to, to do work. 
See yourself as a child of the Most High God. And the Father God is your, if, if, if God is your Father, Jesus Christ is your Savior, and you're a child of God. You've been adopted into the household of God, into the kingdom of God, and He provides you with everything. Everything that He provided Jesus Christ with, He gave the same thing to you. We just, in our, you know, I've said it many times, we're three part B spirit, soul, and body. And I believe that with all my heart. That my spirit man is alive and well, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. My spirit man is sealed by the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead recreated my spirit man. My spirit man was dead, he died because of sin. Each and every one of your spirits are dead if you're not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. But when you become, your spirit becomes alive. And once it comes alive, it's sealed by the Holy Spirit. Nothing can come against it. Nothing can harm it. No sin can come against it. God looks at you. He doesn't see your flesh. He doesn't even see your soul. He sees your spirit man. Because he is spirit. And we worship him in spirit and in truth. You've got to grasp hold of that, what your spirit really is. The spirit is what's in tune with God. That's what meshes with God, spirit to spirit. And nothing can come against that because you're, in, in, you're protected by the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, raised your spirit from the dead. I've done quite a bit of studying on that over the years, and I've come to realize that my spirit man is what God sees when he looks at me. Even when I do a uh -oh, when I do a oh no, and God looks at me, I don't have to be concerned about that uh oh no no. I repent of it and go on. Because when he sees me, he looks at the spirit man. That's what he sees, and it's perfect. It's perfect, just like the spirit of Jesus Christ. Now your soul is being saved. It's in the process of renewing your mind. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. It's your, what you're thinking. It's your imagination. That's your soul. And that's in the process of being saved. Your spirit man is saved, made whole. Your soul is in the process of being saved through the renewing of your mind. And how do you renew your mind? You read the Word of God. You study the Word of God. You listen to the Word of God. And you take it in. You say, well, how does that affect my life? You, you, don't, you don't just let it go in one ear and out the other. You keep it inside and you meditate on it. And you ask God, what does this mean for me? And he'll let you know. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. The Holy Spirit is the one that convicts you of things that you shouldn't be doing. And he encourages you in things that you should be doing. So praise God. Again, God has enough grasshoppers. He wants people that's really able and willing to work. If you see yourself as a child of God, God doesn't focus on the things that you do wrong. He focuses on the things that you're doing right. Praise God. Don't let your past determine your future. In Isaiah 61 and 7, it says, Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion. And instead of a dis of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land, and everlasting joy will be in their heart. Praise God. And that's a promise from God for his people. And he's talking about the Jewish people at that time, but it it filtered right on down to us today. Same promises. For all the hurt and pain, he put you, put you back with twice as much joy, peace, and happiness. Praise God. Be aware of God's favor in your life. Expect to be treated different. You're a Christian. You're a child of God. You can expect to be treated different from other people. People that don't know the Lord, I don't see how they make it. When they have troubles and trials and situations, that, that looks like there's no end to it. I don't understand. I just don't see how they make it because they don't have God on their side that encourages them. They don't have the word to fall back on. They don't have the Holy Spirit there leading them and guiding them in their life. Praise God. They don't have faith. They don't know what faith is. They don't have understanding of the word because it says the word is foolishness to the world, to the unsaved. Glory to God. All right, no matter what circumstances look like in your life, regardless of how many people tell you that what you're attempting can't be done, if you will just declare the favor of God in faith,
God will change circumstances on your behalf. You ever had anything that changed right out of the blue? You didn't understand exactly why. I mean, change for the good. Where you were trying to, I don't know, maybe you were trying to buy a car and you, you, you didn't know which car to buy or how much, how to come up with money or, or some situation in your life. You were looking at a job and you didn't have a job and all of a sudden, boom, everyone fell in your lap. And it's God that does things like that. He changes people. He puts people in front of you and he puts people behind you and changes things in a Christian's life. You're treated different because you're a child of God. You have the favor of God. It says in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. <clears throat> King David. King David was a mighty man of God. He was a king over the whole country. He was he had men, mighty men that under him. He fought many wars. <clears throat> he made a lot of mistakes in his life. Two of them, one of them being adultery and the other one being murder. And that was two things that he did for sure. Right? Yet, God gave him favor and a new start. He was able to start over. It says in Acts 30, 13, 22, after removing Saul, he made David their king. He testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. God was proud of David. He forgave him for what he had done and set him on the right track. He said he was a man after my own heart. Because he said in the Psalms, renew in me a new heart, Lord. He wanted his heart, any more heart just changed. He wanted a new heart. He wanted God to create in him a new heart. So that he'll have a heart for God. And we all should have that heart. We all should have, we have that renewed heart. In your spirit, your heart is totally renewed. In your soul, your heart is being renewed through studying the Word. You're learning. You're learning in things. Every time you look at the Bible, and every time you hear a message, you learn something. You, you, you plant that seed inside of you, and that seed will grow, and it'll produce fruit. That's what we're called to do, to produce fruit. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's Psalms 3 and 6. David expected God's favor, his kindness, and his goodness. David expected. He said, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. You can't get away from good things of God. Goodness and mercy will, chain, will, will chase you down. If something good happened in your life, it'll pop right up out of the blue. I saw a man the other day. He, he, uh, I was working up in Charlotte. And I uh, had gone into a boat jars to get some lunch or supper or one. I was in the afternoon. And there was a guy come in there begging. There's, there's beggars everywhere. There's people that's in desperate times and desperate, desperate things. And, and he come in and asked the manager to place for a dollar. He needed a bus ticket to go across town so he could go home. He, was, he had to cross home. So she said, I can't give you any money out of the register. I just can't do it. So I reached in my pocket and I gave him a dollar. And, you know, I've given money away to people before they've abused it. And that's okay. That's between them and God, not me. I did what I was supposed to do. I gave him a dollar. And he was the most appreciative person. He came to me and said, I thank you so much. He said, I didn't know how, where or how I was going to get back home. He was 10 or 12 miles across town from home. But it was just a dollar to me, a dollar. And a dollar is a dollar. But, you know, it's not a million dollars. It's one. But he acted like it was a million bucks. And uh, he said, I, I, he appreciated it. And I was getting ready to leave and went outside. And, and he came out to me, followed me outside. And he said, I just want to tell you again that I really thank you for that dollar. I mean, he was really appreciative. And I said, well, are you, how long before your bus comes through? He said, it's going to be about 20 minutes. And I give him another dollar. And I said, go in there and buy you something to drink. <laughs> he said, it's hot out here. And it was. And I said, go in and buy you something to drink. And uh, he said, man, he said, bless you. <laughs> and anyway, he went on about his business. But anyway, that's what God will do for people. I mean, he just put in me to give him a little money and help him out. And that's what people do for you. That's what it'll do for you. Something come right out of the blue. You don't know where it comes from. But I'm telling you, don't cast the pearls before swine. Don't cast your pearl before swine and give it give the credit to God. Give him the glory. Praise God. All right. You may 
they say that, you know, all this is great, but I have a lot of negative things going on in my life. Well, maybe you do. We all do. Each and every one of us has times when we have negative things going on, coming against us, or it seems like it's coming against us. But those of us that know the Lord, trust in the Lord. Put your trust and faith in Him. I got a, in, God gave me a, some special thoughts this morning while I was thinking about this message. And I said, Lord, this, this message is, is this part of what you want me to give. It was, but then if you put it in my mind, He said, a lot of bad things happen to good people. And there's no fault of their own. And then it started thinking. I said, I was thinking, and it, it just, God promises us peace that passes all understanding. And he brought Pastor David into my mind. He was already on my heart. I had prayed for him and his daughter, his wife, and his family. But when that, I saw that, I wrote it down. And I said, Lord, Pastor David's a good man. He's a hero. He's a hero to me. He's a hero to this church. And not such good things is happening in his life, in his family. And I said, and have you ever asked God why? Sure you have. I imagine most of you have asked him why already. And I thought about it. I meditated on it. I just got quiet. I was up early this morning. About 4 30, 5 o'clock. I always get up that time of the morning and was in the house. Everything was quiet. No TV, nothing on. Interfere with what God was trying to tell me. And God said, I'm faithful. And that's a promise. He said, I promise you, I'm faithful. And I said, Well, God, what's going on in Pastor David's life? And he started ministering to me. And uh, I'll tell you, Pastor David is, is a hero to me. And I'm sure he's a hero to his family. And I don't know everything going on in his life, but I know so. And uh, I said, why is Bethany in shape she's in now. He said, this is, this is what's going on. He said, Pastor David, is, he said, no, he's, he's my servant and I have it all under control. It's not out of control. He said, but the reason things are working out like they are, he said, <clears throat> he thinks he chose Bethany as a child. He adopted her. But in reality, he didn't choose her. God chose him for her. God chose Pastor David for Bethany. Now, God knows all things. He knows what's happened to you yesterday. He knows what's happening with you today. And he knows what's going to happen to you tomorrow, next week, next year, the rest of your life. He already knows. He's already seen it all. Now, I'm just telling you, we live in a world, a fallen world. We live in a fallen world, a world with sin. And again, spiritually, we're complete. We're as holy and complete as we'll ever be in your spirit man that's saved. In your soul, your thoughts, your minds, your will, your emotions. Sometimes your emotions run rampant. Sometimes they get away with you. Sometimes they hurt you. Sometimes what other people say hurt you. But that's part of getting in the Word, realizing what God says about it all. He says, I promise, I believe it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I'm not bothered about that, but it's in 1 Corinthians, and I think chapter 10, that He wouldn't put any more on you than what you can stand. He said, I'm not put you through any more than what you can take. And that's a promise. Again, 
Pastor David chose Bethany, but God chose him to raise that child with what she'd already been through before she came into his household and what she was going to have to go through after she became his child, his daughter. He said, I couldn't put her with anybody else. It had to be him. I chose him and I chose her to be with him because I knew, God knew, that he could use Pastor David to take care of her. And he also knew that she would be a tremendous inspiration to Pastor David. So it's not just a one-way street, it's a two-way street. And not only him, but his entire family. His wife and his sons and their families. See, they're all in this. They kind of get looked overlooked in the background. But there is no background. What you do and what goes on in your life affects other people's lives. Especially when you love them and they love you. But there's not another man on this earth. When God chose his own son for the ultimate sacrifice for us to save the world from sin, Christ was the only one that he could look to. The only one he knew he could depend on. The only one he knew he could trust. The only one that he knew would do the job that needed to be done. It's the same thing with Pastor David. He's the only one. This is why he's going through this. Because he's the only one that he knew could do what he's had to do. And I, he's my hero, I'm telling you. He's my hero. To be able to minister to a church, minister to a daughter, that's been through a lot and ministered to his wife that's also in a lot of physical trouble that's been taken care of by God. So he was the only one, and that's what God told me. He said, he's going through this because I chose him to go through this. But I'm, he also promised that he would be faithful. God himself is faithful. He can't go back on his promises. He said, I will not put any more on you than what you can stand. So please understand that he's got a lot on him, and he's got broad shoulders, and he stood in this pulpit quite a bit when I could tell that he was, he was, I don't know what the word to use is, he was wet, he was kind of wore down, but he never faltered, he never failed. I want to go to another hero that I'm comparing to him just a little bit, and that was Job. Job lost all of his family, all of his property, and his wealth, and he became covered with boils. That was Job. That's a picture of Job. He got a lot of poor advice from his friends. Very poor advice. They told him to curse God and die. Job wouldn't do that. Job didn't do that. <clears throat> says in Job chapter 10 verse 12, Thou hast granted me life in favor. Now he said this during the time of turmoil. This is, he lifted God's name up. He lifted up God. He didn't tell God to curse God and tell him, let me die. He lifted him up. And that's what Pastor David's been doing in his pulpit every week. Lifting up God. Sharing his emotions and strength. And in faith and in trust. Knowing that God is on his side. That God is with him. And that God, as he said, God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. It goes over and over in my mind. Just those few words. It says, Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. Even though he couldn't understand God at the moment, and maybe the pastor don't fully understand all he's having to go through at the moment. 
He never belittled the blessings he had already received. Yes. Verse 42, chapter, chapter 42, verse 3. Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. Nowhere in the land was there found women more beautiful than Job's daughters. Job lived for another 140 years. Wow. After he went through all that, God took care of him. God's taking care of our pastor. He's taking care of Bethany. He's taking care of Linda. And he'll take care of the rest of the family because he's God. And he promised to be faithful. Faithful. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. <laughs> Praise God. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Praise God. That's my message for today. Short, I know. I just want you to understand how faithful God is to those that are faithful to Him. And I see my pastor as the most, one of the most faithful men I've ever met in my life. Now again, I'm not going to cast my pearls before swine. I give Pastor David all the up and ups I give him. But I'm telling you, I know where his faith comes from. And I'm giving it credit to God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He gets the credit. When the pastor lifts you up, you get the credit to God because that's what he wants you to do. He's not going to want nobody lifting him up. He's going to want lifting up Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because that's where his strength's coming from. If he didn't walk with God, talk with God, and be faithful in his ministry, then he would be lost. He would be going around in circles in turmoil. And I'm telling you, God's in control. God's in charge. And God will bring him to it. All of them. He'll bring his wife home. He'll lift his daughter out of that sick bed. And he will show favor to the man of God. Praise God. And I appreciate it, Lord. Because he's an honest man. A loving pastor. A strong human being. With God living inside of him. Spirit man is alive. Praise God. So I'll tell you right now, if you don't mind, if you, I would appreciate it if you would stand for just a minute. But we're going to pray for you. Praise God. Anybody like to stand in for the pastor? <clears throat> I'd be glad to have you come up. hand this way. Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I thank you, Lord God, for our pastor. I thank you for his daughter, Bethany. Lord, for she's encouraging him and he's encouraging her. I thank you for his wife, Lord God. I pray that you will heal her body, bring her back home, Lord God. Lift Bethany off of that sick bed. I rebuke that cancer in Jesus' name. I speak life into her. I speak life in Jesus' name. And I strength, speak strength into my pastor. And I speak the glory of God come out of it all, Lord. There'll be a testimony there that they'll be able to use for the rest of their lives that will glorify God and will honor God and will be a testament, Lord, to their lives that they stood with God's hand on their shoulder. And he'll say, job well done, praise God. And he'll be... He'll learn from these experiences, Lord God, that he'll be able to take that education and he'll be able to use it for other people that are in dire need and that need it and don't understand how to deal with it like he is learning to deal with it now. I praise you, Lord God, for the whole family, each and every one, the sons, the daughter-in-laws, the grandchildren. Bless them all, Lord, and let them see Christ in it all. In Jesus' name. Praise God.
Yes, ma'am. Could we pray together Yes, yes. I was intended. I thank you for reminding me. Uh, Brother Bill is home. Yeah, he, uh, he was in the hospital. He had an injury to his leg in a car accident. And they had to do a little bit of work to it. So, praise God. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord God. Brother Billy, sister, sister Dorothy, the family, Lord. I pray that you would just heal that leg, Lord God. Let it heal rapidly. Let the doctors be amazed how quickly he recovers. And I thank you for him being able to come home. And I pray for those that are caregivers for the Lord. Just lift them up and strengthen them and bless them, Lord, in their caring for the family. And let this family come together and rejoice in the power of God healing in their lives. You see, by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. And I pray a manifestation of that healing in their lives, Lord God. Just continue to strengthen Miss Dorothy, Lord, and let her be able to get about the house and she's, she's able. And I thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. All right. Praise God. Okay, folks. All right. Praise God. Okay, folks. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir? Can you give us Linda had uh, surgery about a week ago, yeah. and she had a blood clot went to her lung from the surgery, and that's why she's there now, recovering from that. And that's where she is. So he's up there close with all this household family. <laughs> all right, I dismiss you today and be blessed. Go to God. Enjoy your afternoon. Thank you.